Welcome to another episode of UCRD Reviews. So today we have another figure that comes from Mobile Suit Gundam 0083 Stardust Memory. This one's the RX-78 GP01FB Gundam GP01FB version anime. This one goes by a couple other names. Uh, the one that I'm probably going to refer to it as is the Full Vernier. Uh, it's also called the Full Burnern, which I think sounds incredibly stupid, although that is what it was called on the American MSIA release uh, way back in the day in the early 2000s, as well as a lot of other Japanese uh, translations of it, Full Burnern. I don't know where they get that from. But I call it the Full Vernier. It is the upgrade to the Zephranthes when Kouraki took it out and got it demolished in space, they turned it into this mobile suit, which, funny enough, was the result of, uh, or resulted in canning the GPO-4 development, because the GPO-4 Gerbera was supposed to be just a space version of the GPO-1, but since the full Vernier exists and it's a space mobile suit, there was no point in developing it, so we just have this. So this mobile suit was Ko's for all of, what, like three episodes, and then he gets it destroyed fighting GP-02. So although it was only in one piece for a couple episodes, it is a really neat-looking mobile suit, and like I mentioned a second ago, we haven't had a, a figure of it since the MSIA, which was quite a long time ago. I, I don't think it was in the Gundam Fix line, so we are long overdue. You have a really cool little side profile there. A really nice uh, picture on the bottom of the box. Uh, some of the accessories and things. And then you have a really cool picture of it fighting GPO2 on the back. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Obviously, it's going to be pretty similar to the GPO1 figure, I'm guessing. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see. All right, viewers, quiz time. What does it mean when it has an open window in the box? You're all wrong. It means it's a regular release, which means you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for it, which is kind of nice. It just costs an arm or a leg, which is, I guess, better than both. But moving on, this is the GP01 Full Vernier. So we got the uh, really nice head sculpt that the Zephranthes came with. You have the Vulcan sculpted in. Uh, you have a little hole there where the antenna will go. You have uh, two of them, so if you break one, you have an extra. And you do have a replacement antenna for the VFN as well. Head comes down about that far. It moves up, and then you have full 360 rotation on it. Chest, you have a little bit of, a little bit of chest flex there. Not a whole lot. It can come down a little bit, and then doesn't really come up much at all. It will rotate, but it looks like it's stopped maybe by, uh, looks like skirt armor or something's stopping it. But it looks good. The, the front end looks really nice. You have the uh, two cameras on the shoulders and this little one right here. These pieces here are removable. We'll get more into that in the accessories section. Uh, but there's some cool stuff you can do with those. And then on the backpack here, you have two ball jointed thrusters that are effect part compatible down here. You have these two massive verniers, which is why they call it the full vernier. These are uh, multi jointed, so you can swivel them, move them up and down, side to side, you can kind of do whatever you want with them. They do have ball jointed thrusters in here as well that are effect, pa effect part compatible. I have to talk right. And then same with these three here. The whole backpack can come up and out. So you can do some weird poses with it there. And it'll kind of snap back in place. You do have Beam Saber storage racks back here. And these will actually swivel downward about that far, each one. And you just pop the Beam Sabers on them right there. Going down into the waist, you have uh, ball jointed skirt armor on the front. You have ball jointed skirt armor on the side. And you have ball jointed rear skirt armor. So you can kind of see the mechanics of the legs in there. So ball jointed skirt armor all the way around. You do have weapon storage back here which we'll cover in the weapon section. Skirt armor is prone to 
popping off and flying across rooms, so do watch out for that. In the arm articulation, the arms don't seem to... I guess it helps if I have it in frame. The arms don't seem to pull out like some releases do. The uh, shoulder armor, since I have it removed on accident, I can show you it just kind of pops in, almost like the old MSIAs. This piece is movable. You have verniers on the front and on the back side that are thruster effect part compatible. And then these little verniers here that are not effect part compatible can be removed and there's an accessory that goes with these that we'll cover in a little bit. Arms will come out... Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so it comes out comes out like that. So arms will come out about that far, which is pretty good. Obviously they rotate around. These rotate at the bicep there. You have uh, double jointed elbows and you have uh, basic hand articulation, I guess. You have kind of that curved wrist there. Sculpt looks really good. You have the uh, shield storage, or not storage, but uh, hard point right there. And this shoulder joint, for whatever reason, is very loose. This one's kind of loose, and that just ha has to do with how they clip on, I guess. Um, just kind of rattles around, though. It looks like it wants to fall off. I mean, it's very flimsy. So going down to the leg articulation, the thigh joints have that rotating thing that all the version anime figures do. You don't really have um, like thigh rotation though. I mean, just just a tad bit, but not like a full rotation to it. And then the legs will come up about that far without knocking the skirt armor off. Knee joint makes a decent bend there, and they'll come outward. Here's where I'm going to knock skirt armor across the room. They don't come out too far. It feels like they're going to pop off of their joints. So we're going to go ahead and close that up. And you have a little hinged piece up front for the foot armor, and you have a hinged piece back here. You have a little hinged uh, thruster that is effect part compatible. And with the feet, you have one, two, three, four, five compatible uh, hard points there for thrusters. The feet will move at the uh, toe articulation point there. The side to sides, not anything crazy. But, you know, it's got a ball joint down here and a ball joint connecting somewhere up in the calf. Now, the way they look is really good. You have the uh, green on the foot there. Really iconic leg design. A little bit plain in the back, but, you know, version animes are kind of known for that, unfortunately. So, looks like a really good figure. Uh, just as well made as a lot of the other 0083 stuff, so I'm happy with this one so far. So... Let's go ahead and check out some of the stuff it comes with. Alright, so in typical version anime fashion, we're going to look at the most exciting accessories that we get here, and that is the hands. So we get two uh, gun hands here, two beam saber hands, and two different sets of posing hands, all on a nice matte finish, beautiful gray hand holder that nobody cares about. So couple of things on the figure. I did put the antenna on. I do recommend taking the V-fin off, placing the antenna on, and then putting this back in. And as you can see, I got the beam sabers hooked in there. It looks a bit long. Like, they're, like, up there. They're, like, high. But it still looks good with the dynamic of the figure, so I, uh, I think it looks pretty cool. Moving on here, a lot of the accessories are going to be stuff we've already seen with the uh, regular GPO-1 release. You have the shield here, which is the exact same one. It comes outward, has the handle here that is not movable, which is dumb. Uh, you have the little hard points down here for the little beam rifle magazines that I can't get out. I'm just knocking things everywhere, so we're going to go ahead and 
do right like that. And they are not here, they're actually here. And they'll plug in like so. You also have the uh, arm connector. I'm just going to use this beam saber for everything. You have the arm connector that plugs in up here as well, just like the other GPO-1 release. So if you want to see any of this in like super detail, you can look at that release, that review that's linked down below. You do have the beam rifle, the really cool looking GPO-1 beam rifle with the swiveling handle. You have the swiveling camera. Everything's painted pretty much the same. It is effect part compatible, removable magazine, which I always love. And it has the uh, little uh, beam blocker dude here. It's called a, a beam, like, jute or jute or something. It's not in English. Now, this little piece is not the easiest thing to attach. Let me see if I can. Oh, oh, no. Oh. Oh, that blew apart. Let me see if I can do it off camera real quick. There we go. So, looks kind of like that. It's easy. This piece comes off, as you as you saw, that I accidentally removed. And you can kind of line it up and then just kind of place this piece on there, and it pushes it into place. It's a cool little idea that they didn't really utilize in, in future mobile suits where, it, you know, to block a uh, incoming beam saber almost like a you know medieval kind of sword so really really cool so you get that little that little piece in there and then we're gonna get into the more unique stuff I guess I can grab this one down here so as you can see there's little thrusters and they are effect part compatible which is pretty cool and these will actually pop off like so I think this one goes on the other side. So we're going to just remove both of them. Why not? And these just kind of pop right on here. Like that. Get this other one out of here. And they go like that. So in the show, the GPO-1 is seen a couple different times using these front... Uh, nipple boosters to, you know, kind of right himself when he's trying to aim his gun, or he uses them against GPO-2 when he's uh, fighting him to kind of distract them. So it's really cool that they included this. I like that. And kind of on the same vein here, this, this gets removed, these little thrusters there, and you can replace either side with little thrusters that are kind of poking out there, which is pretty cool. They, these are not effect part compatible, but again, these are, which is pretty cool. And then lastly here, you have the storage piece for the beam rifle. Uh, same one that the uh, other GPO-1 release comes with, and the peg facing away from you, rifle facing that way. It just kind of drops right in like so and you can take your figure the backpack is actually completely removable if you pull on it like that you're not breaking anything which is good because you don't want to break this figure and then you can just plug it right in like that so it stores pretty well it's secure it's not rattling around or anything so really good piece there all right, so now we're going to go ahead and get into the effect parts. And the GPO-1 full vernier actually comes with quite a few. So you have some pretty standard stuff here. You have your, your basic curved uh, thruster effects, which work just fine. We get them in a lot of releases. You do have the beam saber slashing effect. Of course, you have your two beam sabers there. I guess I forgot to mention those. And then you have the firing effect that has uh, that little piece that goes along with it. You do get this big old chunk right here. This is the same piece that comes with the GPO-1 uh, 
regular release. Pretty sure it was the GPO one or GPO one or GPO two came with it. But you put the beam sabers through it, and so I, I'll link that review down below so you can see kind of how that works. But it's the same, same piece there. Um, you also get the thruster effects. You know these these kind of three part thruster effects. If I can get them out of here, where's beam saber? There we go. So you have uh, the three components, just like the GM Kai space type. So I'll link that one down below as well, so you can kind of see how this works. And I'll put one of these together real quick. Okay, so just like last time, you have the uh, kind of conical piece that's cut out, and then you have this secondary piece. Now between these two, there's a little piece that goes inside here. You get two straight pegged ones. This is a straight pegged one. And then you have, this is the curved version. And that goes inside this uh, clear piece. And it'll just plug right in there. And then you have the longer piece sticking out here so that you can have some really cool thruster effects going on there. So it looks looks really good. Of course I'll show it in a little bit, kind of put together. And then we have one last set here. And this one is a little bit simpler. So you have two pieces. You have kind of this conical piece and then a little short piece. And they just kind of plug into each other and go right in the barrel there. And you have a really nice looking firing effect that um, I actually like this one better than the original original one that came out. This one's kind of bulky. Looks too much like a, like a beam saber. This one's much lighter in color and looks more like the uh, beam firing effect that was from the anime. So I really, really like this piece. This is a cool, cool addition and it's new. This one's completely new to this figure. So uh, really, really nice there. And then of course, I guess I should mention, you have the uh, little removal tool that helps with taking apart this kind of stuff. So you take all of these out and then I think it I think it just goes straight through here. And with a bit of force, or maybe not. Let's see if I do it down here on the ground. There we go. Pops it out. It takes, it takes a bit to get it actually out, but that got it out pretty good. You do want to be careful of this little uh, pig piece because they made it very thin, so it may break, but Otherwise, it works pretty good. So real quickly, I wanted to do a comparison between the GPO-1 Zephranthes and the full vernier version, just so you can see the design differences between the two and uh, what differs in the figures. So the heads are pretty much the same. You'll see the chest um, is similar, but painted a little bit different. Um, you know, this one, had, hardly has any skirt armor, whereas this one has full skirt armor, side skirt armor is much longer. The uh, shoulders are changed quite a bit. Arms are the same. The legs are completely, I think they're completely different. Uh, thighs might be the same, but definitely, of course, from the knee down, they're changed. Still has the little green on the foot, just like, just like this one does and then move it around toward the back here. You have, close that up there. You have the uh, very different backpacks, the more ground type simplified backpack versus the full vernier's massive backpack there. So both really fantastic figures, both well worth having, um, but I wanted to kind of show off the difference between the two real quick.
So the Robot Spirits line has yet another awesome Gundam to add to its reserves. For $59.49, which is what I paid during pre-order phase, this thing is well worth it by a long shot. That doesn't mean I don't have complaints about it. Um, there's no Core Booster 2, which, you know, the MSIA version had it. I don't know why it's not here with this one. And there's no long barrel prototype beam rifle. That gun came with the... I think it came with the second version MSIA regular GP01. But it would have been nice to see it here. It was not in the anime. It was only in a... Uh, I think it was in a manga or something. But would have been cool to have it included as an extra accessory. But what we do have is a new effect part set. Or, you know, a little double set here. And then we have a whole bunch of... Uh, other effect parts which are really cool you know that's one of the staple accessories for the version anime and then it comes with everything else that the GPO one uses in the anime which is always nice so I mean it looks amazing with all the thrusters like I said you know all these are thruster effect compatible everything in the feet so there's a lot of different options you can have with it and it looks really really good no matter how you have this thing posed so I'm really, really happy with it. I know the price has gone up quite a bit just since I've bought it. I've seen it all the way to $90 and higher. Um, hopefully once the excitement dies down, it'll drop in price a bit because it's a regular release, so it'll be easier to pick up. But if you have the opportunity, absolutely get it. This is one of the best 0083 releases thus far, and I like this one better than the regular GP01. So thank you for watching the video. Thank you for supporting the channel. I will see y'all next time. Uh, I think the next review is going to be a really cool mobile armor. So we'll take a look at that uh, on my next video. So thank you for watching, and y'all be safe out there.